but they do set you up in good position on second down. On second down, here's Fournette. He finds an opening past the 40. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throw right side caught by O.J. Howard. And he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Probably mean to jump in on you, partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Fournette, a first down carry. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And the pressure gets to him again. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that. Got it above the defense and over the post. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. down Everett and no incomplete boy they took a shot there on the first play try to start it out with a bang but it's second down one of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading trying to figure out what they're doing and on that one they had to fly just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it what people call a dagger route trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out in this case though they're not able to get it done yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Used to have a coach used to tell us all the time, those scouting reports aren't just to use up paper, guys. Well, nowadays, you know, we're watching a computer screen, right? They scouted this team very well. Know that they like to use the running backs in the passing game. They covered that play successfully. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. from the gun, Everett. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Now that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Right. 
They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And some room to work. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That good for 19 at a first down. Now they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. They keep it with Fournette on first down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Looking to throw. And a hook up here to Allen Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. They'll try the right side here with Fournette. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play caller, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Really at a hole here, third and 17, following the two negative plays. Now back to throw. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field, and he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. And this one is right down the middle. And that'll make it 6 0 here in the first. So that scores now on their first two possessions, but it's 6 0, probably not the kind of scores they were hoping for. No, not at all, but I think that they've shown that they can have some success against this defense. So they'll go back to the sideline knowing the points are going to be there for the taking. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. Oh, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. Charles, they won last week despite him not running the ball well. They told us need to get him going. Runs like that help. And they talked to us about leaning on him because, as you noted, last week they didn't have to. Still won the ball game. They leaned on other people to give them the yardage that they needed. But they really want him to be that guy, and that's what they're doing early in this game. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. From the gun, Everett. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. to the line of scrimmage and no more no gain on the play it'll be second down 
So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Our first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from Green Bay. Early lead in that one for the Packers. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. Looking to throw on second down. Everett under pressure, and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Play action. Everett. And that is incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And he'll go ahead and field this at the five. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we pressure gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here we go! Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And he's going to get this one all the way up to the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a 6-foot, six 6-inch six target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge 6-6 six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. They'll set up to throw. He's going to let this one go deep. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. And now the offense operates in the red zone. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I'm wondering, partner, if they might need to sub him out for a play or two because after that long run he just had on the previous play, he might not have all of his breath back. Yeah, and they went right back to that well. Different result. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. He kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. That is caught inside the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to 
talk to your other coverage. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. A great effort there. Touchdown number 18 on the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. And he's got it to make it now 13 to nothing. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 that time, and a Colts first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. First and ten, Everett, flush to his right, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield, nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique, but if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. To throw on second down, Everett, and he's going to go down again. Yannick Ngakwe, he's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track and it cost him. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Looking to throw. Everett. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And down he'll go at the 25. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. It will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And now out come the Jags. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. He'll drop to throw. He'll set up the screen to Fournette, and they're able to bring him down at the 20. Only a yard there, sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Here we go. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 47, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Well, Brandon, there's no question who they're going to look to on third and long, but you can bet this defense knows that as well, so they've got him blanketed downfield. And this ball winds up being intercepted. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Throwing on first down, Everett. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. A really good pickup of 28 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. On first down, Everett, and it's caught, and he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. And to give this time to the tailback. And he is going to lose yardage here. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. They'll try and sneak it here. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave them with a third down. And on third and inches, we're going to get a whistle and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. It'll wind up being a loss of two. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Please tell me this doesn't come off as snarky, but that's a relative chip shot. I mean, you've got to be able to execute that one. I don't care what they design on the other side about trying to block the kick. That should be three points on the board. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. If you're out at 55, 60 yards, low trajectory from here, go, go, go. you get that thing up, this should be three. Yeah, I, there's nothing routine in football, but this one really almost... In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. I'm starting to wonder if this offensive line just simply doesn't like him. I mean, they've given up six sacks in this game. He's had nowhere to go, nowhere to run, and obviously nowhere to hide. And all those sacks in the first half, this is just complete domination. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. On first and 10, Everett. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? 
Can I create a penalty downfield? Maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield. Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Come on, let's go! Ohio! Ohio! To throw on third down, Everett. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. throw now on second and ten and he rifles one incomplete big OJ Howard his intended target third down here that one didn't quite make it to the target but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback is it sometimes there's just too much pressure there in any case the ball doesn't arrive Come on, on third down he'll drop to throw he's gonna fire one and that's caught inside the 35 and all the way down to the 26. A big third down play there for the Jags. 42 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They go play action here on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. The Colts on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This is third and 8. Let's go! 190! Ohio! Ohio! Flex round! Flex round! Here we go! Operating from the gun. Everett. He's got his tight end on the corner round. It's complete. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. 
But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Now a play fake here on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off here, the 32. And a great return as he gets this all the way down close to the 30-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. Finding room to the 20. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. They'll toss it to Fournette. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Yeah, now it's the safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Come on, let's go! They'll set up a throw. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Well, that's two sacks in this game, so add that to the four from last week. I think that's six. Good math. Excellent math. And look, he's going to get all the attention he deserves. It. He got home and got the quarterback on the ground. But that's a concentrated team effort because you have a lot of guys who occupy blockers to allow him access to rush the passer. So three field goals for him here, and this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Flex round, flex round, flex round, flex round, flex round. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. This is complete to Hawkins. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. So the offense has it first and 10. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Going down the middle, and it's complete. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Now they've been struggling in the passing game. Do you like the aggressiveness there? I mean, it worked on that play, but do you like it? I do, because a lot of the time, you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start to press up on you. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now, there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll make this a second and long. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. 
Back to throw. Everett going up top. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. An attempt at a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Off the play fake. Everett. Coleman has it here right side. They wind up getting six. but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. It'll be a gain of four. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. I can't believe they even let you play. Let's go! Looking to throw. Everett. And that one falls incomplete. Try to dump it underneath. Now second down. A man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before. Almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, it really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Throwing again on second and ten. Everett. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Let's go. From the gun, Everett. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is going to be incomplete. Chuck Pagano decides to go. It doesn't work out. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. It's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield, go. 
Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. They'll look to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. How about that? Their quarterback, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. He's got a man that's caught left sideline. A really nice gain of 25 yards. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Looking to throw on second down. Everett going to throw deep for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. So they will get on the scoreboard here. Give them credit for that. Too little, too late, but no zero. Are you, you're going slow clap on me. <laughs> Not very nice, is it? No, but they haven't been very nice on offense. It's been a struggle. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Operating from the gun, Everett, and that's incomplete. And no, it falls incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. The punter, Kayser, now out to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, 
other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. time to the tailback. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah. And now nothing but green ahead of him. Touchdown, Jaguars. A great play there. His 11th touchdown of the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. Brandon, my man, just one sentence for that one. Clinic. And that's what they've done. They lead the league in points per game this season, but it's been quick strike ability as we saw in that drive. I think they're actually intimidating defenses because they're back on their heels right away, wondering where it's going to come from, how they're going to hit them. This group is well organized, well coached, and extremely confident in what they do. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And the Colts coming out now. Everett. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. again. Everett. Wide open receiver complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Let's go! Throwing on first down. Everett. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, that forced the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Look at a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. And hello, he's going to be knocked backward as he'll be marked down right there at the 43. Another good reception there. Go. The Colts Flex on the march. Flex round. Flex round. Flex round. On first down, Everett. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. The 20. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage. They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Here we go. A handoff as they run the counter play. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line, and I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> we got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Come on, let's go. They run a draw here on second down. Showed some tough running, but they'll drop him at the five yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now, can they get the other three here on third down? Three down. Three down. Right, right, right. 
They come out here in the eye. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. Around the NFL, they're in the fourth now in Green Bay. The Patriots have added on as they extend their lead a bit further. Another victory, perhaps, in the cards. They're looking as good as anybody as the playoffs draw near. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. So that'll back him up five. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow. Talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule. That if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And he comes back with one complete. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off near the 42. A roadway.